Nineteen. Rosalind's favorite number. All right, h of How x is equal to negative four x squared minus twenty four x minus twenty. We know that it's frowning, right? Yep. Yep. Okay, so let's take a look at this sucker. All right. So that would be 2 times the front, that would be negative 8x minus 24 equals 0, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So then negative 8x is equal to 24, right? Yeah. So then x is equal to negative 3, right? Yeah. There's your axis. Sure. That was easy. Okay. Now let's go to plugging it in. Negative 4 times negative 3 squared minus 24 times negative 3. Uh, minus 20. Okay? So, what do we got to do there? We got to do, uh, well, what's negative 3 squared? That would be 9, right? What's negative 4 times 9? Negative 36. What's negative 3 times a negative 24? That would be a positive, uh, 60 plus 12, 72. Minus 20. This should end up being the opposite of that, which it is, a positive 36 plus 20. What's well, a positive 36 and a positive and a minus 20? Right? Uh, that would be 16, wouldn't it? So f of negative 3 would equal 16. And so there you have it. Negative 3 and 16 is your vertex. Alright, we know the axis of symmetry. We know the vertex. We know it opens down. We know that there's a maximum value. Okay? We know that it's frowning. Uh, what else do we know? Oh, we can almost graph it, right? We know the y-intercept. F of 0 is equal to what? Come on, people, what is it? C, which is? Negative 20. So 0 and negative 20 is your y-intercept. Okay? So, then we want to figure out, well then, what is your f of 2 times the axis equal to negative 20? So that would be 2 times uh, negative 3, which would be negative 6, right? Is equal to negative 20. So that would be negative 6 and negative 20. But then we got to check it. So we go negative 6 squared would be 36 times negative 4. Negative 4 times 36, that's a big number. Um, that'd be 120 plus 24. So 144. Negative. And then a negative and a negative makes a positive. And then what's 3 times 24? 3 times 20 is... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. When I plugged it in, I plugged in 6, right? Not 3 times 24, 6 times 24. So, uh, what's negative 6 times 24? Negative 6 times 20 is 120. Negative 6 times uh, 4 is 24. What's 120 and 24? That'd be 144. So, those cancel. Yay! There you go. Okay, it works. So, we can graph it, right? But that's not all they wanted. They wanted one more. They wanted the x-intercepts. Right? So we can graph it, but they want the x-intercepts also. Okay? So they want to know, what is this? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? So negative 6 and negative 3. And um, we went down to like negative 20, so how about uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, right? So here's 20, right? And then here's, where are we at? Uh, 36? No. 16? What? Oh, so it looks like this. 16 is this. Boom. So that's there. Uh-oh. What's happening? What's happening? What? It's frowning, right? No, it's strong. Is it ever going to touch the x-axis? No. No, not with real functions. So no real solutions.
So the only way we can do this is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So negative b, so negative, negative 24 plus or minus the square root of negative 24 squared minus 4 times a, which is negative 4 times b, no, c, which is negative 20. Okay, all over 2 times a, which is negative 4. Okay, and then we grab our little trusty dusty calculator and we go, hey, what is 24 squared? That's 576. Your voice sounds like you belong in a movie. And then, uh, well, I do. You hear that? Put me in a movie, someone. Okay, so, uh, what's 4 times 4 times 20? That'd be 4 20. 16 times 20, right? Not quite. 320. What do you know about that, silly? And then we take that away from 576. So that'd be 556. That'd be 256.
There you go. Done, son. Done, son.